Hey everybody, this video is just a quick demo of the new sublayer transition features in the new transition logic in Unreal Engine 5.5. So what we're able to do now is take a single level design and have different portions of it updated individually without affecting unchanged portions uh, for our transition logic. So basically, here's a simple setup. I've got three different bars here in a lower third graphic and everything right now is set up as it would be for a 5.4 transition logic. So basically my transition logic is enabled, its mode is new, which is the default in 5.5, and we have a layer tag set up for L3, and the transition logic is this traditional default, same as we would have had in 5.4, in that if the same scene in the same layer is detected as part of the transition from page to page, then if we're transitioning out, we're going to play our change sequence, and we're going to play uh, from the beginning to mark A, and if we're changing in, we're going to start at mark A and play out from there. So uh, nothing new there. I'm sure that's all compiled, I guess. Also, I've got my actors laid out so that each row of text and bar are under a grouping null actor. So in here in the lower section, that's got text. There's a rectangle for the background itself, and then there's a rectangle that is a mask for the text. And same for the top here, we've got the text, a rectangle for the backdrop, and a rectangle for the mask for the text. And then in this main section in the middle, where I don't have a mask, but I just have a text and a backdrop rectangle. And so each of these rows, I have gone in uh, for sequencer and created individual sequences for transitioning each of these individual rows of text. So I've got a change top in, and so that's just going to bring that text in from the top, and it pushes it out down the bottom, and we've got main in, and this is just going to be fading in, main out is fade out, and our lower in, it's just a horizontal animation, lower out is a horizontal animation. So each of them has its own pair of animations. Again, so far, everything is the same as we would have had in 5.4. I just created these sequences, gave them their own names, but there's nothing special in terms of tags or markers or anything like that. So now we're ready to go ahead and implement this new sublayer feature so that we could potentially have pages uh, only update certain portions of the level in, instead of like replacing the entire level. So uh, the first thing is to change up how we've got transition logic configured. So I'm going to click the ellipsis next to transition logic and change the mode from new to reuse. Now once this is in reuse mode, now transition logic is going to be looking for the existence of sublayers, then acting on those. Now that acting on those does mean we do need to make an adjustment to the transition logic itself. So I'll click on transition logic and for these change events when we have if the same scene is in the same layer, we don't want to use the default of just playing a single change sequence. We want to use a new special blueprint. So I'm going to right click on the play change and delete that and replace this for if transitioning out when the same scene is in the same layer. I'm going to add a task that's called BP layer change. So if I scroll down, this BP sub layer change task is what we're selecting. And that's provided in Unreal 5.5. And in this case, I'm transitioning out. So I just want to transition this type from in to out. And then I want to make this same thing for the changing in. So again, I'm going to delete the default play sequence and I'm going to add the BP sublayer change and I'm going to uh, transition type in. Yeah, okay. So we don't need to change anything about that blueprint. We don't have to create it. We don't have to configure it. That's already set up by the developers, so we're in good hands there. So I'm going to go ahead and compile and I'm going to save. And now transition logic for this level is looking for sublayers. So we just need to designate those sublayers. So I have these three null actors, one for each row of text. And so this null actor one is for the main level. And and so in my operator stack, I'm going to add a modifier, and it'll be a sublayer modifier. And so now this designates this actor, this null, and all of its children as being collected into a single sublayer. We don't have to give it a name or tag or anything. All we do need to do is designate, well, what sequence should play when this sublayer needs to change in and when it changes out. So I've already got those sequences created. Of course, I showed you that earlier. And so we can go to uh, main in for change in and main out for change out. And we're just going to repeat this for our other nulls. So adding a sublayer, change in for this is the top. So 
change top in, change top out. And this last one is change, add modifier, there we are. And this is our lower, so change lower in, change lower out. Okay, so uh, that's most of it for the uh, configuration. I mean, the only other thing to point out, I'm just gonna do control shift S to save everything. I have remote controls set up with a controller here for each one of these text actors and also for each one of the backdrop rectangles. And so now with this configuration, what Transition Logic is doing in reuse mode, it's looking for actors that have the sublayer designation on them. And it's going to evaluate all of the controllers against that actor that has that modifier and all of its children. And if we find a controller that has changed value from one page to the next, that's going to trigger either the change in or change out, depending on which direction our page is being transitioned. So these controllers will get evaluated and say, okay, if this color has been changed, then what actors are affected by that controller? Okay, this rectangle actor is affected by that controller. That means that it's changing in, change out will need to be played. And so that's it for the configuration. Control Shift S to save it all. And let's put it to use. I have a sub layers rundown already set up for this. So basically on my first page here, I've got sub layer main, top and lower, blue, white, white, and preview that in. And um, I don't have an inner and out, so we're not animating it, just appears. So now on my second page here, all I've done is change the text value for the top. So sub layer top is now topper. And so when I preview next here, we should just see the top it change and preview next there we go and so likewise on this page all I've done is change that lower text so uh, preview next and so the lower changes and in here I'm changing the uh, main text so uh, preview next and so that's how each one of those layers is being updated individually also here in uh, this next page all I changed was the color of the main and you'll see that it'll play the change for the main but that even though this text doesn't change it will still get faded in and out because it's um, that's what this animation does but there you go that um, the color change alone triggered that to run. If I wanted color to be changeable independent of the text, I'd create uh, another, a different sublayer designation for the rectangle and make sure that rectangle wasn't in the same null as the actor so for the text so that you know we could change the color independent of the foreground. And then the other thing just to note is if I play uh, preview next again, we're going to get back to the first page. Everything's different. So all three of those changes will happen because all three of those sublayers changed. So I hope this helps introduce the sublayer concept from Unreal Engine 5.5. And until next time, have fun.